Well, hello everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title, five different ways. Uno, dos, cuatro, cinco, seis. I think I got that right. It's not my first language. Five different ways to retouch skin. I don't really retouch skin so much as just remove blemishes. I want to kind of boom, 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 hammer this out really fast. Now, if you like the video, if you want to support the video, make sure you give it a little thumbs up there on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That way you never miss another Photoshop or photography related video or tutorial in the future. And if you do feel so inclined, you don't have to, but if you feel so inclined and it really supports the channel, you can pick up a copy of my course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. I think you're really going to like it. We're moving into a new studio space. We're changing the way these tutorials are made. Uh, everything's going to kind of change a little bit uh, very, very soon, in fact. Uh, but that's one little way you can help us out as we make the move and really crank things up. But for now, we're creating – or not creating. We're not creating anything. We're talking about five different ways to heal blemishes on the skin. So here we go. We've got a model. She's got some very pronounced uh, acne here. We're going to talk about how to get rid of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just right click on our layer and convert it to a smart object. Now I want to go with filter camera raw filter. This may not seem like the logical place to begin, but hey, that's where we're going to begin because this is just how we do things. We've got her here. I'm going to use my magnifying glass tool and we're going to zoom in on uh, on her skin here. And you can see just some pimples and things up here on the forehead. We're going to grab the little ble uh, blemish brush tool. And the cool thing about this brush is, number one, we can set it to heal or clone, right? You see that? Healing and cloning. I'm going to just roll with healing. Cloning is a little bit too literal. Healing does a little bit of that healing thing that I like. Uh, feathering, typically when I'm working on skin, I like to keep the feathering very low, sometimes totally non-existent. And a size of six is probably fine because what I can do is I can just begin brushing over something like that pimple. And the cool thing about the camera raw filter is I can choose where I'm sampling from after the fact. So I can say, you know what, that looks great. I can hit the letter H and it's going to hide my little uh, overall heads up display uh, graphics. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Hit the letter H, it's going to bring it back. And I've got a new brush so I can then just go and attack this little area and attack this little area. Great. Now, one quick thing that I do want to point out about the brush, if you have like a whole long, thin line of something, maybe a wrinkle or something you're looking to get rid of, she doesn't really have any wrinkles on her skin, but let's just go with the edge of the towel here. This is going to do a lot of damage, just a fair warning, but the, the, the principle is what's important. If you click once and hold down the shift key and click in another spot, Camera Roll creates one long line with your brush. And then you can move and sample and, you know, change up that one whole line. So you can imagine if you have, you know, a, a bird dragging across a long exposure of a landscape to, uh, you know, a wrinkle across somebody's forehead to a little, you know, spaghetti noodle sticking down a kid's shirt or something. There's all kinds of different areas where you would use something like this. I'm going to hit the delete key and delete that little pin that we created, that sort of healing that we created. And then I can hit OK. And that's the first way, using camera raw. Now, because this is a smart object, I can simply grab the smart object and delete it because we got four more ways to talk about removing blemishes before this whole thing is said and done. Next up is spot healing. Now I like to create a new layer for my spot healing and I'll call this blems or blemishes or clone or healing or whatever. And the spot healing brush is right here. It's it's uh, the top of the healing tools here in Photoshop. But the spot healing brush, the cool thing about spot healing brush is that you don't really have to sample. It's kind of just plug and play. So let's zoom in here once more. I'm going to grab the spot healing brush. We can right click and you have all your normal brush options. You know, again, I'll reduce the hardness, uh, size is whatever. 25 pixels is probably fine. You do have these different modes. Normal Normal and replace. Replace, I don't really use many of the others. I mean, you can use them. They can be really useful for all sorts of different things, but for general quick skin retouching, you're probably just going to stick with normal. Replace is almost more literal. Think of it as an almost clone stamp, but still with some of the healing attributes of the spot healing brush. Normal is the full, you know, full real deal uh, healing brush. And you can choose content aware, create texture, proximity match. Generally speaking, content aware is the best. And because we're up on a blank layer, we want to choose sample all layers. Why am I up on a blank layer? You say, well, because if we go over this and we we get rid of that blemish and we get rid of this blemish and we get rid of this blemish and we get rid of all the blemishes and we hand the photo into the client or show it to them, you know, send them a digital copy, whatever, and they say, oh, wait, there was that beauty mark you know, on my cheek or something. That wasn't a pimple. You got rid of that. That's a, that's a defining feature of my look. Can you bring it back? Well, you know what? Of course, we can bring any of that stuff back because it's all up on its own layer. And therefore, we can just jump in with a mask or use the eraser tool, whatever, and just, you know, wiki, 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 get rid of whatever we want, and it's gone. So that is the spot healing brush. I'm going to delete that layer. We're going to create a new layer because the next thing is the straight-up 
old school, not really that old school, but just like a, a click older than the spot healing brush. My favorite method of getting rid of blemishes on the skin, the healing brush. Now you might say, why do you like the healing brush more than the spot healing brush? Spot healing brush is pretty awesome. I know, but the healing brush tends to work a little bit better. I'm going to right click. I'm going to just reduce the hardness again. The real difference here between the healing brush and the spot healing brush is you need to sample a skin tone. So hold down your alter option key and sample. Like I want to duplicate or heal from this point over this. And I paint and you can see nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Well, because we have some other options here we need to talk about. Everything here. We got our normal and replace and the rest of multiply screen, dark and light and color luminosity blend modes. Normal and replace are the ones I generally am going to use. Uh, I'm going to go with normal in this case. Sampled is great. Aligned is great. Here's what's killing us. Sample, current layer. No, no, no. We're on a blank layer. There's nothing to sample. We want to choose current and below. The importance of this, by the way, I should just add, the importance of the current and below is that you can heal non-destructively. Like I showed earlier, you can go back and you can uncover that, you know, that beauty mark that the model really wants. Uh, it's just really, really good stuff to be able to do. So current and below, and now you can see, boom, and I can just sample and paint that right away, and maybe the texture's not quite right. I can mesh the texture all together until I just get the perfect little heal there. That's why I like this healing brush better than the spot healing brush, because despite the fact that I have to alter option, click the sample, I get so much more control and I can get such beautiful, you know, nearly perfect blends that it's really, really great. Now we do have this diffusion option here and diffusion, uh, basically the higher the diffusion is, uh, is, I should say, if I come up here and try to, you know, heal next to her white, uh, the white towel on her head, you can see like that, that, I don't know, that fuzzy halo coming off of her. The higher your diffusion number is, the more of that there's going to be. So there's diffusion set to seven. Uh, seven's the highest, one is the lowest. If I come back in here and paint and get close again, you can see how much less of that there is. There's virtually none of it. So if you're working really close to edges, it's a good idea to crank the diffusion down to one. So you can see like over here, I have this little spot here on the side of her cheek. I would make my brush tool a little bit smaller using my bracket keys. I would sample her skin out here and I could just go ahead and paint that away. Now I'm still getting a tiny, tiny bit of the background color haloing in there. And if you wanna be a total perfectionist, what you can do is make the brush a little bigger and actually sample the edge itself and then come in here, line up the edge, and then begin painting, and just paint that blemish right away. And that way, Photoshop knows, okay, we've got this colored edge out here, but all this in here is skin, and everything is beautiful. The diffusion trick it works really well for a lot of edges too, but sometimes you need to go in there and just, you know, really take Photoshop the task and, and let it know, hey, there, the background's over there, skin tone on this side, heal it accordingly. Uh, also in architectural photography, you got a lot of very sharp straight lines. The same thing applies, especially when you're using something like the healing brush. It can be super duper useful. All right, let's delete this layer and let's create a new layer here. Next, we're going to choose the patch tool. So this is another really, really great way. Now, if you're just using the patch tool, it's probably set to normal. The reason I don't really like using the patch tool set to normal is simply because I need to work directly on a layer. I can't work up on my own layer, uh, but there is a lot of cool stuff that the patch tool set to normal can do between source and destination. You got more diffusion options, same principle here with that haloing. Uh, and this is all of your add to selection stuff. So if you create a selection, you can hold down shift and add to that selection, right? You can see how it temporarily switches me over to the add selection uh, tool. Um, I'm going to just command or control D to deselect. That's not what I want to do. I want to go to the content aware patch tool because I can Sample all layers, great. Structure I generally keep around one and color at about 10. It just has to do with how much Photoshop is allowed to push and pull the colors and the structure of the pixels on the layer, uh, which you're healing from. So I'm just gonna select this. That's probably way too big of a selection. Let's select something like that and bring it down about there. Commander control, whoop, Commander control D to deselect. You can see we just got rid of that. Drag a selection over, Commander control D to deselect. That looks a little blurry. Maybe we need a little more texture in it. Commander control D to deselect, great. And you can just go through an image fairly quickly and just, you know, patch tool, patch tool it up. Uh, the only reason I don't like doing this is because unless you get a really tight selection, there tends to be a lot of like residual, like you can tell, I can tell that there has been some healing that's gone on because there's sort of these soft spots in the skin. Um, you know, maybe that has to do with my structure setting. May, I don't know. Um, you can come in and play with different things. Again, it's not a tool that I pull out all the time. I know there are a lot of high-end retouchers that swear by the patch tool. They absolutely love it. Um, and it's, it is a really great way, but it can be something where you might have to go in and, and play with it. Um, but you know, go and have some fun with it. Again, I like to use content aware patch simply because the non-destructive nature, I can work up on my own layer and everything is cool.
Now, before we go any further, I do want to remind you guys, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can pick up a copy of the course that I'm selling all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. Helps support us, helps us do what we do here. And I think even more important than that, I think you're actually going to like the stuff that's in there. Uh, everything from skin retouching to beauty retouching and landscapes and food photography and some product photography. There's all kinds of a, a, a big assortment of stuff. If you click on the link that appeared in the top of the video, it'll take you over to the page. It'll show you all the different stuff that's in the course, list out all the different videos that are in there. Um, yeah, and I think you're really going to like it. Pick up a copy if you enjoy it. Again, the link's up there in the top corner. It may have disappeared by now, actually. But let's get back to this video. So now the fifth and final way to remove blemishes is maybe the most complex way, uh, but it's also super powerful, and there's a lot of stages, so there's a lot of tweaking and adjusting you can do along the way. I've seen some people in the retouching community go a little sour on this technique, but there's still a lot of good use for it, um, and I think you're really going to like it. First and foremost, we're going to duplicate our layer twice. Commander Control J, Commander Control J. I'm going to right click and rasterize both of these layers, and you'll see why in a little bit. And I'm going to name the top layer high. You could also name it details, and the bottom layer low. I've just always named them like this. Maybe I'll just, I'll go low slash colors and I'll say high slash details. And I'm going to shut the high layer off. We're going to select the low layer and we would go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And a good place to start is somewhere around 15 pixels. You're looking to just blur the image to the point where you don't really see all the sharpness and the details, but rather just smooth color everywhere. You can see smooth color everywhere, right? Um, 15 pixels is a good way to go. Depending on the size of your image, it might be a little different, but it's really hard to go wrong here. Like we could get away with 10 pixels here. We could get away with probably 20 pixels. Um, but I'm just going to go with 15. Generally speaking, 15 pixels for like a standard full frame picture is you know, and by full frame, it's something that's, you know, between 15 and 25 megapixels. Generally, 15 pixels is going to be a decent area to live, but it, you know, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. You're really just looking to get rid of the, the sharpness and crispness in the details. That's the important thing. And then we want to select the high slash details layer, and we're going to go image, apply image, and we're going to apply this. Yep. Just like this. We're going to apply it from the layer drop down menu. You probably have something like this, because uh, I believe the default is a blend mode of multiply and uh, a layer of merged. You want to apply this to the low slash colors layer and we want to apply it using the blending mode linear light. And I'm sorry, not linear light, subtract. We're going to use linear light in just a second. We want to use the subtract blending mode and our scale set to 2, offset of 128. Go ahead and hit OK. And then we want to set this top layer to the blend mode of linear light. And you can see, there we go. If I shut these two layers off, it looks like nothing's changed. So here's the cool thing about this. Uh, it really allows you to, to, I mean, split out and do all kinds of tonal and blemish healing for skin. Uh, but let's say we go and grab our healing brush tool. We need to up here, change our sampling, not to current and blow, but rather just current layer. And I'm up here on just the high details layer. And I'm going to select something like that. And I'm going to get rid of this pimple. Now you can see the color is still that kind of darker color because the pimple is just there. So we would also go to our low slash colors layer and we would heal up and change the skin tone and blend it in perfectly. And this is, you're really going to get the best blend doing something like this. Now, because down here on the color uh, layer, everything is so soft, you really could use the, the clone stamp tool and maybe get even better results as well. Uh, but one of the cool things is if we want to just get rid of some of the redness in these pimples, we could just work here on the low slash colors layer and come in underneath this pimple and paint away and get rid of some of that color. And you can see there's before, there's after. We just go in and get rid of most of the redness. See how red that one looks and, and how not red that one looks now? You can really do a lot. And if you want to come into the detail layer and just be gone, be done with the whole thing. But let's take a look at this eyebrow thing. So we can come here in the high details layer and I'm going to just sample up here and we're going to go ahead and get rid of the eyebrow, right? We're going to get rid of a chunk of the eyebrow, let's say, just like we did before. So we get rid of a chunk of the eyebrow, kind of something like that. And then we come down to the colors layer, and it's just a matter of replacing the color that is in the way. And we go in, we get, we replace the color, and you're going to see as we finish replacing all the color how it just changes, and we get this kind of frighteningly uh, realistic looking. Whoop, that was a that was a bad place to sample. Frightening realistic, frighteningly realistic looking uh, retouch of this uh, this eyebrow. I'm going to come in here. You got to just blend some of these textures together. And if I back out, you can see. There she is without the eyebrow, and I probably need to continue tweaking the color up here near the top. But you can, you know, you can go in and you can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until you get it exactly how you want it. But generally speaking, retouching something and making it look realistic as big as an eyebrow is going to be very, very tough and take a lot of time. But using a technique like frequency separation, you can really go in and knock the proverbial ball out of the ballpark 
and it's really not that difficult at all. It's just a matter of setting up your high and your low layer. Now, one just quick bonus point I want to show you guys. Um, this is something I learned a long time ago. If you're working on somebody who is you know elderly, you're not going to obviously retouch away all their wrinkles, but a way you can go in and retouch the skin and make them look a bit younger is create a new layer. This is where that non-destructive editing really helps. Let's just name this healing. And I would come in with something like either the healing brush or the spot healing brush. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's sample current and below. And I could just come across like his forehead here and I could just knock all this stuff out, right? Just go get rid of all these wrinkles, something like so. I could come down here around his eyes and get rid of as, as much in the way of the wrinkles as I can. And it really doesn't have to look all that pretty. It just, you know, needs to be effective. And once you have something like this done, we've just, you know, gone, and it's obviously very rough. You can just come in here, everything's up on its own layer, and just reduce the opacity. And, of course, you're not, you're not healing everything away, but what you are doing is maybe making the person look 10 years younger. You're just making the wrinkles look not quite so deep, but they still definitely look like themselves, but they also look a little bit younger. So there you have it. If you've enjoyed the tutorial again, please go ahead and hit the like button for the video there on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for five different ways and actually a bonus sixth little thing I threw in there on the end. Five different ways to heal blemishes in or on skin. I hope you've loved it. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.